Halftime at Run Baby Run Arena in Jersey City. Fun first half between two really talented teams out of the MAC. It's Quinnipiac, though, with a two-point lead over St. Peter's. And we welcome you courtside here in Jersey City with Daryl Jacobs. I'm Dom Savino. Happy to be with you on ESPN+. Plus. Daryl, we're getting down to crunch time in the conference, getting down to that point where all the games are conference games. Well, most games are conference games this time of year. They might have one or two out-of-league games over the Christmas break, but this is conference time, so this was all about. This is a great basketball game right here. St. Peter's jumped out to a very quick lead, and Quinny Piac actually answered, so two-point game. We well, take a look at the scoreboard in the MAC today. Of course, we've got this one, and you've got a Quinnipiac team that, if it's not Iona, is probably your front runner to win the MAC. But of course, with the Gales, they're going to play against New Mexico in the Patino Bowl today. Rich wow. against Rick. It's going to be a fun one. <laughs> well, New Mexico is a surprise team, one of the surprise mid majors in the country. They're seven and zero, oh, so that's going to be a true chef for the Gales. And take a look at the scoreboard too. We've got Fairfield playing a D3 opponent in U.S. Coast Guard, up by 20 <laughs> at half. Yeah, Niagara you, playing just down the road at NJIT. They've got a 12-point deficit right. as Th well. Those are the kind of games you want to play. You know, you have to play those games, but those money games for the other team, it can count as an exhibition game as well. But anytime you can get some basketball under your belt and you're struggling a little bit, it's going to help. Take that. We'll take a look at some more scores. Tied at half, Mount St. Mary's and Robert Morris have 32 a pop. And then we've got our game right here, Quinnipiac and St. Peter's. One game final, two. Canisius went on the road to play Penn State, who's another surprisingly good team. 97-67. That is correct. The they're, Penn State win. They're playing some great basketball. The Nittany Lions and Canisius went there and took a 30-point loss today. Now these two teams that we're seeing right now, we're going to play some Big Ten opponents soon too. St. Peter's will go play at a top 20 Maryland team. Quinnipiac will play Penn State soon as well, so they'll get chances to test themselves against some of the country's best. That's what it's all about. You play those out of league games to prepare you for the conference season. So this is a one big league. So no matter what you do out of league, it doesn't even matter. But what you do in league is important. A MAC time really starting to come around here. Once we get to the new year, it'll really kick up into a high gear. We'll take a break here from Jersey City. When we come back, we'll talk about somebody we lost from the coaching community just a few days ago. That's next here on ESPN+. Plus. Fun one in Jersey City, halftime between Quinnipiac and St. Peter's, and it is the visiting Bobcats who hold a two-point lead over the hometown Peacocks. Well, some sad news that I'm, I'm sure you've seen if you're a college basketball fan in the last couple of days or a basketball fan at all. On Friday, we learned the news that Lewis Orr passed away at the age of 64 from pancreatic cancer. Somebody who was a star at Syracuse, a star in the NBA, played for the Pacers and the Knicks. Went on to have a great coaching career, too. Was nearby at Seton Hall. And uh, Daryl, I know he's somebody, as a former coach, that you got to know very well when you were a coach, too. Yeah, dear friend of mine. You know, in the basketball community, we lost a terrific coach and a player. But not only that, we lost a great human being. He was a godly man. Um, I spent some time, quite a bit of time with him, actually. Um, he allowed me to come into his practices when he was at Seton Hall. We broke bread together. We prayed together. So, you know, it hit us pretty hard in the basketball community. Lewis, Lewis and Lewis, we know he was battling uh, pancreatic cancer. You know, his last stop, he was with Patrick Ewing um, at Georgetown, and subsequently he got sick. So um, I'm glad they allowed the segment to acknowledge the contribution he made to basketball, but not only basketball, but to mankind. I know, too, as a Rutgers guy myself, his Seton Hall teams were feared, that was sh for sure. And I know when you were uh, a coach, you got to go see some of his practices at, at Seton Hall as well. Yes, I did. He allowed me to step in, not only step in and watch his practices, but interact with the whole staff that was over there. But the whole Seton Hall family, and there's a connection here with Seton Hall, of course. The AD here, Rochelle Paul, came from Seton Hall. You know, and the Seton Hall AD currently was over here at St. Peter's before he became. So there's a connection here. So, um, but my, Lewis was a wonderful person, just a great person, great spirit to be around. One of the nicest guys you ever want to meet. And you saw the response upon his passing, you know, from Patrick Yu and everybody else that he came in contact with, the impact he had on their lives. Yeah, so we mourn the passing of, of Lewis or one of the best guys you're going to find in college basketball and in basketball as a player and then as a coach. I'm sure he'd be enjoying this game right here. Two really talented teams that are playing physically, too. No doubt about it. He enjoyed the game as well. He was a big basketball fan, but, you know, he was a supporter of everybody. You know, he, he believed in unity and equality. So, um, you know, rest in peace, dear friend. Yeah, we should all. We should certainly all. 
Let's take a break here from Jersey City. When we come back, we'll take a look at some stats from the first half. But a fun game between Quinnipiac and St. Peter's. Two talented teams looking for their first win in MAC play. Somebody will find it over the next 20 minutes. Right now it is the Bobcats with a two-point advantage over the Peacocks. With Daryl Jacobs, Dom Savino, and Daryl, St. Peter's had an 11-point lead at one point in that first half, but Quinnipiac went on a 22-2 run over nine minutes' time to turn a deficit into a seven-point lead. Quite a reversal. Yeah, not only that, one of the things I mentioned in those Daryl Dimes they have a propensity to go on scoring drought, St. Peter's, and they came into play and allowed the Bobcats to get back in the basketball game. They started knocking down threes, everything. But to both teams' credit, neither team is shooting over 40% from the floor right now. Neither team is shooting as well, that well from the three-point line as well. So this is going to be a very physical basketball game the rest of the way. Yeah, those field goal numbers, 33% for Quinnipiac, 37% for St. Peter's, but efficiency from the perimeter. That's what the Bobcats had after a slow start. Yeah, that's what they had. They guess subsequently got them a two-point lead, but it's also going to come down, I believe, free throw shooting. I think you might see some calls that wasn't called in the first half, maybe called in the second half, but if the referees stay consistent, it's just going to be a battle of physicality, who can finish inside, who can make the tough plays. St. Peter's got to solve that matchup 2-3 zone that the Bobcats threw on them that slowed them down a little bit. So we'll see what happens in the second half. Yeah, free throw shooting for a Quinnipiac team that's bottom 10 in the nation in free throw shooting percentage. They were 73%, and it was St. Peter's who was just 50%. If the whistle tightens up, that's going to play a big role in the second yeah, half. Yeah, it's always going to come. When you get a basketball like game like this, both teams are being physical. It's always going to come down to free throw shooting, rebounding, those second chance points opportunities. Who will find their first MAC win of the season? We'll find that out around the corner. Second half action from Jersey City coming up next here on ESPN+. Plus. Time to go for the second half at... Run Baby Run Arena in Jersey City, St. Peter's and Quinnipiac in a December pre-Christmas conference game. And it's the Bobcats that right now are having a good time in front by two. But Daryl, we talked about the Daryl Dimes early in the game. One of the things you mentioned for St. Peter's as we look ahead to the second half was avoid a scoring drought. They didn't in the first period. That's why they lost their lead. They have to try it again here in the second stanza. Yeah, if they can avoid the scoring drought, and especially if they can get start the second half like they started the ball game and just try to play even from that point in time, they can get out of here with a W. Uh, St. Peter's team led by a first-year head coach in Bashir Mason who knows a thing or two about winning conferences. Won three NEC regular season crowns in his 10 years at Wagner, a three-time conference coach of the year there as well. In IT bid as well along <laughs> the way. That's right. A Jersey City native as well, just like Isaiah Dasher is. And 14 points for Dasher in the first half. He was the guy for the Peacocks. Yeah, he's giving gifts out, as he said. He dropped 14 for him in the first half, as we mentioned. They last game out against Hartford at one point win. He has 23 at the 58. But they're going to need somebody else to score besides him this afternoon. So all set to go. Quinnipiac will see if they stick with that zone defense that puzzled St. Peter's. See if the Peacocks can turn the defense back up to where it was in the first nine minutes when they only allowed seven points. And no real big scorers for Quinnipiac. Again, it was balanced in the first half. Desi Jones, six points to lead them. And there he is. As I mentioned, they have four guys averaging double figures coming into the ball game. So they do it by committee. They got a variety of guys that can score the basketball. And as you mentioned, Dom, they're going to stay in this 2-3. Coach Dunleave is not going to come out of it to the Peacocks try to find some way to solve it. Latrell Reed. Oh, and the point pass is picked off. There's Courtright. Walled off by Young, but the layup is good anyway. Uh, was able to steal the basketball, come down the floor under control, and use a pump fake inside, score the basketball. Mentioned Courtright last time out, nearly had a triple-double. Today, the stat sheet is a little... Less boisterous, but still six points, three steals, and a pair of rebounds. Dasher on a three, no. As I mentioned, the Peacocks got to get those paint touches. They don't want to get in the three-point shooting contest with the Bobcats. D Dasher gets another try, and that time wide right. And Young goes over the back. 
Great box out by the guard, Denzel Jones. Was able to box him out. Do a good job. As I mentioned, you guys maybe don't want to get in a three-point shooting contest with the Bobcats. They came out, they missed their first two threes. Got to get those paint touches. Somehow, some way, they got to try to penetrate the zone or get along the baseline, get some movement on it. St. Peter's four of 18 from distance. And lots of moving screen. That'll help. Oh, no doubt about it. Great call by the officials. No doubt about it. And the foul will go against Otieno, who picks up his second. The point I was going to make, though, 18 three-point attempts for St. Peter's, more than half of their total shots. That's not an average for them. It's not normal. You know, one thing, Baker Dunley, obviously, the scouting report is, you know, we can play zone. We can want to stop their penetration and try to force them from the outside. Good pass right there, inside. There, there it is. goes in for so. That paint touch. I mentioned, as long as you get the paint touch, the basketball can touch the paint touches. So or you get into the soft spot in the middle of that 2 3 zone, good things going to happen for you. Great execution by the Peacocks. Mohamed Sow's first two points of the game. And back to a one possession difference. Quinnipiac wants to go inside, and Otieno gets fouled. Yeah. Kept his forearm in his back, so kept his forearm in his back right there. You know, NBA, you probably get away with that. Substitution into the ball game. So, so, who just committed his third foul, will come out of the game. Now we'll see Jerry and Gopo in for the second time, just three minutes in the first half. Matt Belong, he was quiet in the first half, no points, 0 of 5 shooting. Typically averages double figures. Good defense by Dasher on the court right. Four to shoot, an air ball and the tip won't go. That was a nice try by Otieno. Yeah, that's great defense by the Peacocks. Very nearly stole two points out of that possession. i tell you, both teams are playing in midseason form. In the conference, like they're in the conference time, both teams are playing with a sense of urgency. And Peacock's are running a little three-man action here, three against two. That soft spot, there it is. Great three pass. Opposite for Cardacy, in and out on the three. Ah, great pass right there. Again, hit that soft spot. Once you get into the middle of the zone right there, you're going to be able to look either side. Well, it's clear that St. Peter spent some of that halftime drawing up their press, or pardon me, their zone offense. There's Noweke. Not a, a three is not his game, but the putback is the game for Otieno. Wow. That's a missed defense assignment right there by Nagopo. Didn't put a body on him. Got to put a body on him. Paul Otieno, four points, now six points it is, and three rebounds. Cardesi gets a second chance and air mails, uh, air mails it. He's really struggling to shoot the basketball. And he'll probably get a sub in now for Cardesi. Probably get Rivera. Rivera's another shooter. And sometimes it's just not your day. You know, he's been really pressing, Coach said, since he's been here. Because he comes in as a prolific three point shooter coming from Conference State. And as you mentioned, Don, 111 over a two year period. Chance for Quinnipiac to extend the lead. Kick for Jones. Three will fall, but Shinnery just down to the court, had it, and it got blocked. Blocked by the Peacocks. Let's see if they can get something in transition. Yeah, Quinnipiac recovered quite nicely. We know it's St. Peter's game to get out and run. Yeah, since they're struggling scoring the basketball in the half court of this 2-3 zone, Reed say, I got to try to get out and transition. Good pass. Again, that's that high post. That's that way where you want to attack the zone at in that soft spot. A young man had a better look if he took the shot first. Jones, lots of contact, and that should not count. It hit the score, hit the top of the backboard. Only if you're in the playground that may count, but that should not count. Hit the apparatus up here. Let's see what they say. The officials going to probably take a look at this, and let's see. Right now, there's no indication. Whoa. There's no indication that the officials is looking at it, but they're going to confer. They're going to confer. It seemed to hit the top of the backboard oh, and no, this no, no the doubt about it. Hit the holding it up. And no doubt about it. Hit it. Now watch this. Bang! Hit the top. It might not have. Wow! Looked like it scooted off the top of the backboard. It might have skipped. 
It might have skimmed the up top here, but we'll probably see this when we come back. Yeah, we'll let our officials talk it over. Is it an and one? We'll find out on the other side.